910 Big 550 KTRS. Our next guest, his name is Jim Bell. And the book he has written is called The Interstellar Age, Inside the 40-Year Voyager Mission. Back in 19, what, 77, 78, uh, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 took off from the Earth. And its plan was to sort of do a flyby of the solar system. 40 years later, Voyager 2 is about to leave the solar system for good. And uh, these, you can make an argument that this is one of the longest running space program uh, project and as well as the most successful. Jim Bell, are you there? Mr. Jim Bell, are you there? Good morning. I'm here. Good. Thanks for joining us. Jim, can I up to date? When did Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 leave the Earth, and where are they now? So they were launched in 1977, and they are now more than 10 billion, with a B, miles away from the Earth. They're way, way beyond the orbit of Pluto in the far outer solar system. Uh, the, the sun, like all stars, has sort of a bubble of, uh, of high-energy particles and magnetic fields that surround it, and Voyager 1 popped out of that bubble uh, in 2012, and Voyager 2 is predicted to pop out of that bubble this year or next year. So they are now in what we call interstellar space, the space between the stars, studying that environment for the first time. Okay, so my battery on my cell phone lasts about a day. How, how are these things still being powered? Yeah, that's great. That's true. They're nuclear-powered. They use a little bit of plutonium, which is a radioactive element, and as that radioactivity uh, decays, it, it, it heats uh, part of the uh, system, and that creates electricity, and that electricity is used to run the systems. Pretty extraordinary stuff for 1977, isn't it? It's true. It's true. There's, you know, one of my colleagues pointed out there's more computing power in the key fob that unlocks your car than there is on these Voyager spacecraft, and yet they're They've done amazing things. The book is called The Interstellar Age. Uh, Jim Bell, our guest. Do we still have control over them? Absolutely. We're still in contact with them for many hours a day, each of them separately. Uh, they are um, uh, traveling at phenomenal speeds, of about 10 miles per second. They, they got sped up by the gravity of the planets that they passed. And you try to imagine something going through your neighborhood at 10 miles per second. That's pretty incredible. Uh, but, yeah, we're in contact with them, and they're making measurements and sending data back uh, every day. Last 40 years, uh, I, I, you would, you'd taken a science class in, in high school or a science class in college, and they would say, and every once in a while you'd hear a story about Voyager just past Saturn, right. just just past Pluto. I mean, it's sort of been a, a, a 40-year journey, more or less, right? I mean, we've sort of kept up with this. Absolutely. And, you know, at the time when they were launched, we, we didn't know a lot about the outer solar system. We could see Jupiter and Saturn and the other planets and telescopes, kind of fuzzy. All oh, the moons going around those planets were just little dots of light. We had no idea that they're really worlds of their own with uh, interesting and, and extreme geology and atmospheres and you know, enormous volcanoes on on Jupiter's moon Io, and a huge subsurface ocean on Europa, a thick, smoggy atmosphere on Saturn's moon Titan, and, and the fact that all four giant planets have rings, not just Saturn, but all four of them. I mean, these are all things that were discovered by Voyager. The book is called The Interstellar Age, Inside the 40-Year Voyager Mission. Jim Bell, our guest, this book you will not be able to put down. So 40 years ago, you put a recording of a number of songs, including St. Louis, Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. Not, not you, but the team itself did. Right. And um, the idea was that if it ever runs into some type of uh, intelligent life out there, it will be able to then hear the music of Earth. Now, if somebody were to hand me a recording or an album from 40 years ago of, of Johnny B. Good, I can't play it because I don't have a needle or a turntable. <laughs> How are you expecting aliens to play that? <laughs> well, we did send a needle also, so okay. the needle was there. Right. But we're, you know, we're expecting them, if anybody finds them, anybody or anything, uh, to be smart, to understand math and science and physics and chemistry. There's some instructions on the cover of the record <clears throat> that, uh, that explain what to do. Uh, if they examine it, if they have microscopes and computers like we do, if they understand a hydrogen atom and the periodic table like we do, which we think are kind of universal things, then they'll figure it out. If, if they're clever, 
they'll figure it out and learn how to uh, to read this record and to play it. You know, and it may be it may be us. It may be us who find them. You know, we're we're going to continue exploring. We've explored the moon. We're going to go on to Mars and other planets in the future, and maybe in the far future, become interstellar travelers ourselves, and maybe we'll catch up with the Voyagers and read those time capsules what, ourselves from the 70s. What was the Rosetta Stone? What's the key to all of this? The key to reading the record? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the pictures on the cover of the record are sort of in, an instruction manual, and uh, it, it teaches them a little bit about numbers and distances and how the, uh, the, the scratches in the grooves are frequencies that they can convert into music or pictures. And so uh, there, there is an instruction manual on the front. It's not written in English. It's written in, hopefully, universal language of mathematics and physics. And, and if they're clever... They should be able to read it. You also, they also put, the book is called The Interstellar Age, Inside the 40-Year Mission uh, of Voyager, Jim Bell, our guest. Um, you also, is it true that they put a map of where Earth is in the solar system or in the universe? There's a, there's a, a, a picture description that shows the sun and the major planets of our solar system. And from the third planet, there's a little line that goes up and out. And at the end of that line is a sort of a little cartoon picture of the spacecraft. So they uh, they should hopefully know where it came from. What was uh, was was it when it was first launched in '77? Was it expected to last this long? You know, people knew that the power supply would last this long. The power will continue to last until the mid to late 2020s. But you never know what the environment's like out there. I mean, they went through the rings of Saturn. What's it like? Is it going to get hit by something? Or what about the crazy radiation and magnetic fields of Jupiter? What's that really like? You know, so never any guarantee when you're exploring something, a place for the first time. But, but these are some just great pieces of American engineering, right? These are one-off, custom-built vehicles for traveling in the outer solar system. And I think the folks at the Jet Propulsion Lab did a great job keeping them going. It's, it was 9 degrees when I woke up this morning. It was cold. <laughs> But outside of the solar system, it's really cold. It's even colder. How did they build something to withstand the, the intense heat and the intense cold? Well, the, the cold, you battle it with the heaters. And so each spacecraft has uh, the main body of the spacecraft, which is called a bus, has heaters inside of it. And that, some of that electricity from the power source runs the heaters every day. And it keeps the inside of the bus above sort of minus 30, minus 40, which is... Fine. Electronics don't mind being that cold. Get them a lot colder, like outside the spacecraft, it's, you know, minus 200 or minus 250. That electronics won't work in. They'll, they'll crack, they'll break. But as long as there's enough power to keep those heaters on, to keep the inside of the spacecraft warm enough, the electronics will work just fine. Jim Bell, our guest. The book is The Interstellar Age Inside the 40-Year Voyager Mission. Scientifically, what do we know now because of the two Voyagers? You know, when they were launched uh, in 77, we knew very little about our outer solar system, about the giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and the others. We could see them in telescopes, kind of fuzzy blobs, but th their moons were just dots, just points of light. <clears throat> we didn't know much about them at all. By going there, by projecting ourselves there, by, by visiting virtually through these robots, taking pictures and other measurements, now we know those places as worlds of their own with really exciting geology and meteorology and magnetic fields. And I mean, you know, Jupiter's uh, moon Io has more active volcanoes than the Earth does. Its moon Europa has a more extensive ocean than our oceans on our own planet under that icy crust. There's a moon around Saturn called Titan that has a thick, smoggy atmosphere that may be what the early Earth's atmosphere was like. We, we didn't know that all four giant planets have rings. We thought just Saturn had rings. All these things were discovered by the Voyagers and now are part of the textbooks. The book is The Interstellar Age, Inside the 40-Year Voyager Mission. Jim Bell, thank you for your work. Thank you for your time. Good luck with the book. Thank you. Great to be on the show. You got it. 920 here, Big 550 KTRS.